Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the square root of 7 minus 3x equals 7 minus x squared all over 3, and we're going to be finding the x values. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to square both sides. So this is going to give me, the radical is going to disappear once I square it, and I'll have the square of a quotient. Now to square that, we can just square the numerator, which is 49 minus 14x squared plus x to the fourth, divided by 9. The top is basically a minus b quantity squared. Let's go ahead and cross multiply this. 63 minus 27x equals 49 minus 14x squared plus x to the fourth. If I put everything on the same side, it's going to be a quartic equation, which means fourth degree. Let's do it. x to the fourth minus 14x squared, bring the negative 27 as to a positive. And then 49 minus 63 is just going to be negative or minus 14. So that's going to be our quartic. Unfortunately, it's not easily factorable. It is somewhat factorable. But first, we're going to be looking for a candidate. What is, what is a possible solution? One of the things that I've always told you, I think in different videos, is to check the sum of the coefficients. Remember Vieta's formula, if you add up the coefficients, you get a certain number. But in this particular case, if you add up the coefficients, you get a zero. Why? The coefficient of x to the fourth is 1, so it's 1 plus negative 14 plus 27 plus negative 14, and that is just zero. You could also tell from Vieta's formulas the sum is zero because there is no x cubed, so b is zero, negative b over a is also zero. So there's, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but the sum of the coefficients equals 0 implies that x equals 1 is a solution. And that's great. It's better than guess and check, right? Now, we need to find other solutions because if we divide this polynomial, quartic, by x minus 1, we're going to end up with a cubic. You can use the cubic formula. You can even use the quartic formula if you're brave enough or if you're just crazy. I mean, that's kind of complicated. It's not super bad, but it's really bad. Anyways. So I'm going to do the following. I'm going to use the rational root theorem. What are factors of 14? Think about it. 14 is 2 times 7, the product of 2 primes. So I have 1, 2, 7, and 14. And also their opposites, right? So those are my candidates. I have 8 candidates. 1 is a candidate. It's already a solution. And the other one, without further ado, I'm going to give it to you. x equals 2 is another solution. How do I know that? Don't worry, I checked it for you. And if you plug it in, you're going to see that it works. So, those are the two solutions. That's going to give us a quadratic, and the answer is quartic, so we'll get the other quadratic. If you multiply these two, you get x squared minus 3x plus 2. And our original quartic is x to the fourth minus 14x squared plus 27x minus 14. If you divide this quartic, by that, you're going to get the other quadratic. But there's also another way to look at it. You can set this equal to, hey, I know one of the factors, right? And the other factor should look like this, x squared plus ax minus 7. Why? Because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. That's the only way to get x to the fourth from here. And the constant is negative 14. That's the only way to get it. So the only thing you need to find is a single variable, easy, distribute, and you'll get it. So not, not too bad. And if you do it, again, I'm going to skip those steps because they're going to take a long time, and you can definitely do it on your own. I trust you guys on that. You're going to get the following. Our quartic is going to be factored as x minus 1, x minus 2, and the other factor is going to be x squared plus 3x minus 7. Set it equal to 0, you got all the solutions. We already know x equals 1 and x equals 2 are solutions, but the other two are going to come from the quadratic. And if you use the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4, you see all that stuff, you're going to get the square root of 37 and all over 2. So those are the solutions. But this is a quartic. Yes, it should have four solutions, but the original equation is not quartic. We squared both sides. Caveat, be careful. Warning, caution. Achtung. Why? Because when you square both sides, there's a chance that you are introducing extraneous solutions. So, how do you avoid that? By looking at the domain of the radical. The radical tells us that, hey, this 
radicand, whatever you want to call that, it's a weird name, needs to be greater than or equal to zero, which means x is less than or equal to seven thirds. So if you check our solutions, one and two are good, but if you look at this, you're going to notice that one of them is not going to be less than or equal to 73. Seven thirds, I'm sorry. How do you know that? You can definitely check that for yourself, but I'm going to show you a graph at the end, so let's save it for that part. Now, here's my second solution, and the second solution is actually, obviously, right, <laughs> cooler than the first one. First one is kind of brute force. Uh, the second method involves the following. Guess what? My favorite method is substitution. So we're going to set both of these equal to y, right? And then take a look at the first one. Square both sides, you're going to get 7 minus 3x equals y squared. And then take the second one, cross multiply, 7 minus x squared equals 3y. Switch these around because they're going to be minus and plus. You get 7 minus 3y equals x squared. And guess what? You got a lovely, beautiful, awesome system. I know some people don't like these adjectives, but I'm sorry about that. I like them. I hope you don't mind. So we're going to go ahead and do the following. We're going to subtract these two equations. Or you can do the following. How about this? 7 equals 3x plus y squared, but 7 is also equal to 3y minus x squared. So these two things are equal. Awesome. Now, what am I going to do? Put everything on the same side. I don't know. Left-hand side is okay. y squared minus x squared plus 3x minus 3y is equal to 0. This is y plus x times y minus x. This is negative 3 times y minus x. Yay, I got a common factor. Of course, you should. y minus x if you do it correctly then you get y plus x minus 3. Going too fast? Let's slow down. So this is what I did. I used substitution, squared both sides for the first one, and then I got two equations. So I kind of turned my equation into a system, which is kind of crazy, but it makes it easier to solve because now we got a beautiful, nice uh, equation in factored form. And this implies what? y equals x and y plus x equals 3. And of course, this has consequences. Let's go back where we substituted x or y or y for x or x or y, something like that. We can replace y with 7 minus x squared over 3. 7 minus x squared over 3. 7 minus x squared over 3. Try to memorize that. Okay, that's what I sometimes try to do. So now you get this equation and then guess what? Cross multiply. Put everything on the same side. And voila. You get the same equation that we got before. Uh, when we did the first method. And this equation has two solutions, negative 3 plus root 37 over 2, and negative 3 minus root 37 over 2. And this one is going to give you 7 minus x squared over 3 plus x is equal to 3. Multiply everything by 3, easier than making a common denominator, same thing, sort of. Put everything on the same side. Uh, well, let's see, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. Yay, this is great, of course, because we heard another solution has come on pretend to be surprised. x equals 1 and x equals 2. So those are the candidates, but we have to check for extraneous solutions. So here's what I'd like to tell you. I don't know if I told you before, but this is less than 0, negative. So something that is negative, do you think that is going to be less than or equal to 7 thirds? If something is negative, obviously, that is going to be less than or equal to 7 thirds for sure, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we're just going to wrap it up. Here you go. What's really interesting about this graph is that notice that uh, these are solutions, right? And uh, obviously 1, 2, and 2, 1 because x equals 1 and x equals 2. But guess what? These two curves intersect at three points. Isn't that interesting? I kind of find it interesting. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.